Well, good morning. I've got a got kind of a leak on my air compressor, and it's coming from the actual pressure switch. This is what actuates the uh, uh, motor starter up there. But as you can see, I've got some bubbles there, and I've just got some soap in a spray bottle. You know, it looks like the rubber diaphragm underneath. I'm going to uh, square D. Uh, they're pretty proud of this one. This is the uh, square D pressure switch. So uh, they're going to get over a hundred bucks for that thing. So uh, we're going to go through it and uh, see if we can repair it. If not, I'll have to buy a new one. But uh, let's get it off, get it apart, and see if we can actually uh, make a new diaphragm for that. Okay, well we got the pressure switch off and it's on the bench. And it's old. And there's many different types of these. This is a differential type. It's got two adjustments. One's your cutout time and one's your dead band. And there's, a, there's other types too. Some will have a pressure relief valve that will actually operate a little valve that will bleed off the head of your compressor, which this one does not have. Some have a control type lever for the big box store type uh, compressors. This is a two pole, which means there's two uh, sets of contacts in there and I can manually operate them right here. So this is just a two pole differential type switch. And you, this way, I, I set mine for 175 cutout and a 150 cut in. So this, this, is your, this is your cut out adjustment. This is your cut in adjustment. So that's all it is. It's just a switch. No, no bleed valve and no control switch. So um, these are kind of white elephants. This one has a metal case. A lot of them have kind of a cheap plastic case. Uh, but this is a genuine square D. And there's literally nothing wrong with it except it's got a bad diaphragm. So let's uh, flip it over, take it apart, and see what it uh, looks like in there. Okay, so this is what we found when we took it apart. Um, we got this. This is the collar. It goes down, uh, and this goes to tank pressure right here. That's a quarter-inch MPT. And then there's this uh, steel disc and a rubber diaphragm. The diaphragm I actually found to be good. I'll show you what I found. It was actually a paint failure. All this paint was all cracked. And it was seeping in between the cracks in the paint and it was seeping out you saw the leak it wasn't much it was seeping out right around this perimeter right over here everywhere the paint failed all i did was scrape it a little bit with a razor blade but i'm going to sand it and refinish it so it doesn't corrode and uh i think i'm just going to reinstall my uh gasket here or my diaphragm it's it's sun checked around the edges but it doesn't seal there you see that ring the ring right there, right at the tip of my fingernail, it coincides with this raised ring around this collar. That's what pinches it all in there, and it's in really good shape there. On the other side, it's pretty interesting. On the other side there, there's a little metal push, uh, push bar. This just sits on top of the diaphragm. And does not... It does not appear that it was vulcanized to it. I don't think that comes glued to the rubber. If it did, it became detached. And those two little, those two little tits on that go to uh, those two little grooves you see down that there. That's what's going to actuate your switch. Now, while you've got it apart, not a terrible idea to uh, clean the contacts. You can get a repair kit. That, that includes the contacts, but I haven't been able to find one that has the diaphragm. Uh, those two screws right there, pull those out, then this contact block will lift off, and then the contacts that are on the actual arm, they're spring-loaded. And you can twist those, get those out of there, and uh, just polish them up with some fine grit sandpaper. Uh, I'm not using this for motor loads, so this doesn't ever see full current. I'm using it for pilot duty just to actuate a motor starter so it doesn't uh, it doesn't really hit that hard on this if you're using this for motor contacts I can see where these contacts would wear out to start and stop a motor uh, but I'm not using it for that like I say I'm just using it for pilot duty and there you can see your two differential uh, pressure adjustments okay anyways that's what that's all about so I'm gonna clean up these contacts uh, refinish that base Get a fresh coat of paint on there and get this uh, uh, diaphragm put back in and we should be good to go. I'll bring you back when we get the whole thing put together. 
Okay, well, I thought I'd bring you along for the ride, and we'll go ahead and pull the, uh, the switch gear off. It's uh, not a, like I said, it's not rocket science here, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to get to the contacts and what to do with the contacts. Sure what this plate is. I want to make sure there's no spring or anything behind there. Yeah, we're good. And uh, I'm going to release that and pull this out. Okay. Now you can see these contacts here. And this is the one I've been using over here is this side. And we're just going to give those a little polish. And in here you can see the contacts in here that they mate with. And we're going to give those a little polish. We got spiders crawling around in there too, so we need to clean those out. If a spider gets in between that contact, it's not going to make. So, uh, this is a really old switch. This is a phenolic block here, is what it looks like. All right. But, anyways, uh, we're going to clean at least one pair and then clean these fellows up here. Now, these, you have to pull them in and give them a little twist. Then they come out and the spring will stay there. That's the contact block right there. And if you get a kit, that's what you're going to get or those contacts there. All right. But, uh, we're and if you'll notice, they're slightly domed. They're not dead flat. They've got a little dome to them. Uh, you can even see that. Can I, what can I use for a straight edge? How about my screwdriver? Yeah, it's pretty hard to see that. But contacts do have a slight dome to them. Anyways, we're going to pull, we got these out. We're going to polish these on a piece of, uh, probably some 1200 paper on the, on a plate. And then these, these are actually come out pretty easy too. Um, you have to pull out your, uh, uh, screw where you attach your wire. So you get that out of the way. And then down deep inside, you'll see. Another little screw down there. And this would be pretty much the same as a uh, uh, magnetic motor starter. You know, you can pull a motor starter apart and you can replace and clean contacts in there too, as long as they're not too far gone. Okay, so I've got that contact out there. There's that little fellow there, ready to clean. And then there's my little screw to hold it in. So. Uh, we're going to just go rub these around on some sandpaper and get those cleaned up and then let's take a look at them here <laughs> after I answer my phone and get rid of this uh, scam call. <laughs> okay, well, we've got our contacts clean. Like I told you we would. There's the first set. And you can see there, that's the other set that I'm actually not using. So we're going to slip this little fella back in here. And it, like I say, it's just kind of spring loaded. You get, mind that spring. If you, if you lose that, you're going to be searching for it. And then uh, these are the ones that go on the actual block. There's one and two. And you can see how they look. They look much better than, there you go. They look much better than the, uh, than these or the other ones in the block over here. <clears throat> There's the other two there. So, like I say, we're only using one side, so I'm only going to clean one side. Just do as, as little as it takes to keep from getting kicked out the door. And do as little as it takes to keep you guys watching. All right, let me put this thing back together. And uh, now we're, I got my uh, base uh, all scraped and sanded and refinished. And uh, as soon as that dries, we can put it all back together, throw it on the compressor, and see if we got a winner. Okay, well, she's all back together. Uh, diaphragm, I put it in with a little bit of gasket shellac just to make sure it's sealed up tight against the case. Um, the shellac is non-hardening. It's just a Permatex, uh, I can, they call it an aviation type gasket sealer. It's a shellac. So I just did the outer rim, the working part in the center. I didn't do that. You don't want to get anything on that. You want to, that one needs to be soft and pliable. Actually, that center section, I wiped it down with a little bit of brake fluid. Uh, that keeps your brake fluid is surprisingly good for rubber. It, uh, it'll keep your rubber supple. Anyways, diaphragm's done. Uh, contact on the left 
is clean. I don't think you can even see in there. I'm trying to tip, the, tip it so you can catch the light. You can see the one on the right still untouched, but the one on the left is the one I'm using. All right. So uh, I think we're done. We're ready to reinstall and see if we did any good. Um, if I did, it took me about 15 minutes and I saved myself 100 bucks. Penny saved is a penny earned. And I don't think they make them like this anymore. This is a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice unit. I don't think they're identical to this. They are a little, uh, a little more cheaply made. I'm sure this top piece is just plastic instead of this phenolic. This is probably a late 60s, early 70s uh, air switch. Pressure switch. Anyways, let's go get it installed and uh, see how we did. Okay, ready to power up again. Uh, main power. And pilot power. She's running. Let's let her build up. Okay, well, we're all reinstalled. And we're up on pressure. Shop's on pressure. And I sprayed it with soap already once, but we'll uh, we'll check it again just for the heck of it. Nothing. So our diaphragm's not leaking. There was just that paint failure at the bottom of the switch. And now we got clean contacts in there on the left side. And I'm going to check my cut in and cut out. Uh, she cuts out at 175, and she's supposed to cut in about 125. So I can actually bleed off a little bit of air. Mind the noise. Right, guys well that's it if you ever want to know how to how to repair or inspect a uh, air compressor switch by square d that's how you do it all right guys hope you enjoyed see you on the next one